Hello and welcome to this Microsoft SQL Server video tutorial. In this video, I'm going to talk about the introduction to Azure Data Studio that is connected to our Management Studio and then we're going to see how to use the Arvin clause as we have seen in the last video of how to use the group by clause. So let's see the Azure Data Studio environment and learn one or two things on how to work with it. So let's dive in. Now this is Azure Data Studio. Now when you check the pane to your left, you can see we have the connection. I, I can see my server name and I can see the Adventure Works 2019 database. And these are all the myriads of tables under the database that we can work with. You can click on the search, you can click on the notebooks, the explorer, and so on and so forth. Now, let's say you want to create a new query. You can click on this new button and choose new query or deploy the control N shortcut. Or you can even decide to open a file or open a folder to work with, okay, which are stored on your machine. So let's click on new and choose a new query. Now, by the way, this is the welcome page and it's, you can see, you can create a connection, run a query, create notebook and deploy a server. Now let's go ahead and create our connection and re then run our query. So now I've choose new query now the first thing we need to do here is to ensure that we call the database that we want to use so in this case i'm going to come to this query and type in use adventure works 2019 by the way you need to type this accurately and then you can click on the run which is the same thing as execute now in this connection detail you can see connection type microsoft SQL server and you can see the parameters and then it's asking for my server name so I'm going to just put in my server name Abiola David 01 and then we can see the authentication type window authentication database and so on. so just click on connect and then we can see that commands completed successfully and the total execution time is nothing okay so we can go ahead and write our query now now let's go through one of the tables and the one we used last time is sales dot sales order detail so let's just select the entire table sales select from sales dot sales order detail and let's go through the the table now let me just you know minimize this and minimize this so that i can see some spaces and adjust this now this is looking awesome i love this interface compared to the sql server management studio interface okay so we can see the columns we have the other id sales order detail and so on and so forth now from here let's see we want to just pick three or four columns so let's choose select I'm going to get this sales order ID so I'm going to type in sales order ID comma and let's um, take let me scroll to the right unit price and the line total so unit price column then line total then I can say from sales dot sales order detail table so let's see these three columns so when i click on execute so we can see that they are available for us to consume now let's go ahead and use the group by because without using the group by there is no we can actually use the having clause so the group by in the order of execution precede the having clause so i'm going to say come to the next line and type in group by clause now i want to group by this sales order id now when you check the sales order id you can discover that we have four three six five nine as i have explained in the previous video all these are associated 
um, sales order ID. So I want to group by this one and then we use either the sum function or the max function or any other aggregate function to aggregate the unit price column here and the line total columns so for the order by i'm going to order by this sales order id so i'm going to type in sales order id okay then we need to use our aggregate function around the column that contains the numeric value we want to aggregate such as the unit price and the line total so i'm going to come here let's say we want to use the max aggregate function here so i can just put the max and open the parentheses and then i can close the unit price and of course we need to provide the alias so that we can have a more readable output so i'm going to call this on um max of unit price and then let me just move this to the next line and for this line total let's say we want to use the um, average function avg open the parentheses and i close the line total and then let's provide alias okay let me just move this to the next line also so let's call this one um avg line total okay then i'm going to put in i don't need to put in a comma so when we go ahead and execute you can see that we do not have any red underline which means this query is to a large extent accurate and then we should get you know something meaningful so when i click on run we can see that it has aggregated all the sales order id so we can see for sales order id 43659 the max the highest value within the unit price is 2039 and then the average is 1013 and for the next sales order id 43660 the highest value within that range is 874 and the average is 647 so this is just one part of it now we're going to move to the having clause now as i've said by the order of execution the microsoft sql server management will process this group by clause i mean the from and then it will move to you know select group by and then we can use the having clause so we're going to see having now for this we have the max and the average so i'm going to call the same um, thing so let me just say max open parenthesis unit um, price so i want to check that is we want to return the unit price the max of the unit price that is let's say greater than um let's say 1000 or greater than or equals to 1000 so i'm going to use the two math operator greater than or equals to one zero 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 and then we can go ahead and execute or run the query so we can see that from the max of unit price column here all the value we have here is one thousand above you can even increase it further by saying let's say you want to check for two thousand so let's click on run and then we can see 2000 or let's see whether we can have the one of 3000 okay when i click on run okay we have 3000 max of unit price and the bigger the having value that we provided you know the smaller the rows that is returned you can see that we have 1947 rows let's pick um 4000 for now and let's execute by the way this is 1947 so when i click on run you can see that it has oops okay we do not have more than 4000 let's do 35 and run okay you can see that we now have 1551 rows so this is essentially how we use the having clause in microsoft sql server video tutorial and it applies to other others like um, mysql oracles and so on and in fact you can even use order by here 
it's fine so let's say order by I want to order by sales order ID okay sales order ID and then by default it's gonna perform ascending sort okay but let's want to do descending so I have to put D E S D S C to specify the descending order and I click on run so you can see that we now have the bigger value of the sales order ID coming here but if I remove this delete and I click on run we can see that we have it from four three six nine seven so this is essentially how we can use the data Azure data studio and then we can run our query using the having clause I hope you enjoyed this video if you do you can like comment share and consider subscribing to this channel thank you